I'm looking for an update on Devon A. Chain. What can you tell us about how he's doing? Um, good week to week. Um, it was uh, he he was playing hard and uh, had had um a defensive lineman's body weight fall on top of him. Um, but he's good and uh, uh, avoided anything severe. Great, thanks, Adam. Yeah, I guess just the follow up was: Do you do you expect him week one? Uh, and if not, does that kind of change your thinking with the fifty three at running back? Well, see, i I don't really, I don't really look at like, I mean, week one is how many days away? Twenty, twenty. Yes. So, um, I I I see him, um, you know, week to week, which is. Uh, I guess seven is dividable, divisible by 20 twice. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it that far out, I'm not really worried about it being an issue. I'm more worried about um, how he's going to look at the end of this week and at the beginning of the next. Um, so that's kind of the timeline for him. Thank you. Perk? Hey Mike, um, how about Eric Saubert and uh, Robert Jones? Um, uh, both those guys, um, you know, uh, were having an excellent camp. I think they really uh, put their best foot forward. So, you know, the, it's always rough um, when when guys come down with uh, injuries during a game. Um, you know, I think. Uh, uh, Robert Jones should uh should be a little longer I would say but um both of them um are 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 pretty much in the midst of beginning a, a re a rehabilitation process that could um take more than a week or two. Thank you. Marcel. Hey Mike, wanted to ask about Christian Wilkins obviously not participating in team drills, but is this something I know you said you've been in constant contact with him. Is this something that you're concerned at all could spill into the regular season? Um, I, I really haven't even concerned myself with that. You know, he um, it, it's something that's, uh, you know, that when Christian tells me he's, you know, ready to go, um, he'll be ready to go. I'm not worried about the, uh, in anything other than the the guys that are on the practice field each and every day, um, and very uh, very, you know, hopeful that things work themselves out. But it's also I try to stay in my lane um, with uh, coaching the player, and uh, he's uh, I will say he's been absolutely demolishing individual work. David. Hey, Mike. Um, Liam Eikenberg, an update on his status, and also at left guard, uh, what you saw from Isaiah Wynn in the game? Um, yeah, so we had to kind of hold um, Liam back. He was determined, but didn't think it was fair it, from an evaluation standpoint um, to put him out there to try to protect him from himself. Uh, he'll he'll um, be chomping at the bit this w week to um, get reps as he, as he should. And uh, we'll we'll you know just make sure that we don't do anything to um, uh, that on our side that we can prevent from him having uh, any further issues. I thought Isaiah got his feet wet in in the system um, to a degree. I think he did a real good job um, uh, trying to attack our techniques and there's stuff that he he wants to improve upon. That's so the the whole evaluation process in general um you know just like a game doesn't end um after the third quarter um you know i think right now you, you're taking the game tape um and then you're you're applying it the the pros and cons trying to build on the real good stuff that he did and then trying to improve upon the stuff that he knows that um you know he can do better and then we'll evaluate that week uh, or this week as it would be and um, what he's what he's able to do in, in the game moving forward. So it was an important piece, um, but I can't emphasize peace more um, 
the the good games are are were had by many many players, and you want to see what they do with that moving forward. Um, and you know, because the the whole key is like a football team, you need to be your best at the end of the season. Um, so you have to be a player that continues to progress um, week to week, and we get better um, as uh, as the season progresses. Omar, Omar, right here. I'm. I got it. Um, I wanted to ask you about Mike White. There's a report that he's in a concussion protocol. Is that accurate? And what does that do to, if so, what does that do to your planning for uh, exhibition game number three now that you're down to possibly two quarterbacks? Well, um, so, yes, uh, Mike White is uh, in the concussion protocol. He, um, he, uh, you know, the, the dur during the game, we uh, – um, some staff members, um, you know, noticed some irregularities. So, you know, just got uh, that whole process began. And I, I was just told during the game that he was not available. And so, like, um, you know, like that will always be the case once you enter the protocol. Um, you know, I, I don't really have uh, – that's kind of out outside my planning, so to speak. Um, the good news is, as you guys – have painfully um, made, meant, <laughs> been made well aware. Uh, I don't uh, get ahead of myself in terms of planning and how uh, how how guys are going to play in regular season um, or I'm in in the preseason games until uh, the work week is done. So um, we'll we'll move forward. Um, we'll end up signing uh, James Blackman. Um, and be taking reps and evaluate um, those things as they get close to the game. Um, but right now we'll have three available quarterbacks to a um, Skyler and James. Travis. Hey coach. Good morning or afternoon, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> I had a specific <clears throat> question uh, sometime a day. I had a specific question about the film regarding the first offensive line combination and their execution in the running game on Saturday, uh, your thoughts there. And then just kind of generally speaking, how you think the second year in the system has benefited a group that has so many incumbents from the first year here. Yeah. You know, I think you're starting to see some of the stuff that I've talked to you guys about, um, to, you know, since day one that, you know, what we're trying to do um, up front and specifically with the run game um, is demanding and it's uh, very particular to, uh, you know, a, a certain degree of techni technical um, technicalities of, uh, I, don't, I don't know, really physical fundamentals that are different than a lot of guys do in the past. And that's a, that's a process and the, you know, you don't just, um, you know, get to where you want um, in a week, a month, sometimes a season. And a lot of times it takes a couple um, years of development of, of a whole group to, to get it to where you want. Um, I think our, our starting group um, really took a step forward and, um, from from that game, there's uh, guys that are in um, position battles that uh, did good things and and bad things. That's um, all part of the process. Uh, I, I think that we are um, starting to exhibit some of the stuff that you know I, I really hoped we we would this off season. Um, and I it's kind of really met close to where I was hoping we'd be um, to this point. What does that mean? Um, it means you're you're oh, in the process where you, where where you'd like to be, but it's not where you want to go. So um, I thought that there are some real positives that uh, that is a direct correlation with um, complete and utter uh, commitment by the coaching staff and and the players. I think you're starting to see um, some flashes of uh, what we think we can be, but. Um, again, it was great work all week, um, going against different type of technique and a different front. And, um, as a result, we, we did some good things on, uh, 
on the game on Saturday. Um, and, and there's some definite things that we can improve upon that we'll be focusing on um, as, as we progress. Kirk. Hey, Mike, I uh, wanted to get back to the run game very quickly. You guys gained the 205 yards with no fullback. So um, how did the tight ends do blocking? And is there significance to doing that without a fullback that it, the execution and you get to hold something back for the Chargers maybe? No, there there was uh, there was some cool things. Uh, you know, that position um, is really at the point of attack at a lot of times. Um, and what we do in the run game. And I thought the tight ends utilized the opportunity um, to do some things from, uh, from tight ends positions. We, we had them in the, in the backfield as fullbacks sometimes. Uh, and, and it was something that that group wouldn't have been able to do three weeks ago. I don't think um, in its entirety. So uh, there in lies um, a success by itself. The fact that, uh, they were able to go out and and do some cool things. I think they we we have uh, we have some good players that have skills that uh, we can really utilize in this offense. That historically um, found ways to kind of utilize their skill sets, and guys are starting to kind of feel what those are um, within the offense, making some plays in the run game and the pass game. Um, so. They're they're a huge part in what we do offensively. Um, that sometimes r relates to big box scores. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it's a, a, a very very critical position that I thought um, some guys that we really believe in, um, whether they are vested veterans or um, you know young players that are rookies in the NFL. I thought they all. Uh, contributed to the offense, which is one of the reasons that we were able to have some success. All right, thank you. Mark? Good afternoon, Coach. Uh, what what uh, messages or expectations uh, do you plan on uh, telling the team this week before they step on the field for this uh, final preseason game? And how is the, the process been for you uh, understanding that it's just one cut uh, this year instead of um the the typical three. Well, you know, I think that uh you don't hide from you know what what is on a lot of people's minds, and that's uh you know whether you're uh hoping for a position on the on the fifty three, whether you're hoping for a practice squad, whether you're you're hoping to be a starter. Um, you know, a lot of these things we've we've been we've been really working at for an extended period of time. And so you want to do right by all of that work and put your best foot forward, um, you know, knowing that there's a finite timeline. Um, I think that guys have, you know, our team really is doing um, a lot of things that you, you hope, uh, or a lot of things that are necessary for a team to be, be good. And that's daily um, assessment of where they're at and worried about that individual day and not getting ahead of themselves. So we have three practice practices this week and each practice each day, that's all I'll be focused on um, because you, you know, it's a huge piece. It's not the only piece. Um, there's also all the stuff that they put into it, but you don't want to um, go into this final preseason game doing anything um, other than playing your best football within your responsibilities that you've been invested in since day one. So um, the, fir the first thing that will be on the board to the whole team is Tuesday. Um, and, you know, when I talk to them tomorrow morning, I'll be focused 100% on that um, and what guys have an opportunity to do that day because every rep is, is critical. Um, just like every rep at the beginning of the camp is critical and you, they all have a hand in, in their ultimate roles um, on this team and in the NFL moving forward by their daily input and what they're able to do with their day-to-day -day, um, um, practices, reps, um, moments, all those things uh, come into play. So Tuesday will be an important day and then it'll be followed probably um, by a Wednesday that's very important as well.
Uh, Joe Shad. Hey, Mike, thanks for doing this. Um, my Absolutely. friend, Hal, where would I rather be? My friend, Hal, sarcastic. My, my good friend, Hal, told me earlier that tomorrow is Vic Fangio's 65th birthday. And I look forward to wishing him happy birthday in person. I am wondering, um, considering all the many years of experience that he has, how has he and his approach to coaching fit in, meshed, benefited both the staff and the players? You know, it's exciting. I think a 65th birthday, I I'm excited. I hope that I will have one um, because, you know, the, I'm not sure for all you history buffs, but, um, you know, social security uh, is starts at 65, right? Well, that was enacted in the New Deal, I believe, when that was the life expectancy for human beings. So, hey, man, killing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm fired up for him. Um, and, you know, I think that it, Vic has been absolutely phenomenal for um, the players, coaches, the organization. Uh, it kind of fits exactly with, um, what I saw from the beginning, I saw a lot of synergy in, in him and I, ironically, I think a, a lot of people are like, huh? Um, when I say that, but you know, the, the way we approach football, um, the way that, that, you know, our fundamental philosophies of how to teach, um, accountability, uh, towards the player. Um, and then, um, the, and the requisite, accountability necessary from players to to what we're asking them to do the commitment to um absolutely the the best fundamentals and and technique that you can um that 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 you yourself can really come up with over a lifetime of football um he's been he's delivered on that tenfold um i think that the uh it, it, it's been cool to offset, you know, um, you know, we have, we have quite diff different musical tastes. So, uh, um, you know, sometimes I incorporate some of his, uh, his music into, you know, team meeting situations. And I promise you the players know exactly whose musical tastes those are when they're being played. Um, but I think that's important, uh, you know, to have, to have some, you know, uh, it, it just kind of speaks to to the broader um, scope of and, and vision of what the this organization can be, which is um, there's cut from many different cloths. There's um, one sole uh, commitment and that's to winning football games uh, and and really empowering players with their the best tools that they can have. Um, so I think that that embodies that, and you know, pretty much. Uh, if it isn't already obvious, Vic Fangio and myself were the same guy. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Daniel. Hey, Mike. Um, two guys that I wanted to ask for just kind of relative updates are um that I don't think we've asked you about are um Miles Gaskin and Alec Ingold. Um, I don't think we've seen Miles since the first preseason game, and obviously um Alex since the joint practice. Um, just kind of do you have a general timeline on those guys? Um, and, and big picture, just how difficult is kind of the mounting injuries making or how difficult will it make 53-man um, roster? Because obviously there's a lot of juggling with guys who are on PUP who are probably going to start on IR and whatnot. Yeah, no, um, it's, I've been fortunate since I've been on the job. There's been a lot of juggling. I, I anticipate there always being a lot of juggling. So comfortable in that. Um, both Miles and Alec are um, – uh, on the on the very close side of being able to participate in football again, um, so I expect to see them um, sooner than r sooner rather than later. Um, and you know, injuries are something that you're always having to juggle. Um, so, you know, that can dictate the terms of how many practice reps you're able to take, depending on how many um, available players you have. But on a roster like this, um, you know, I think that what it, what it's done is uh you know really enabled some people to get some opportunities to uh showcase some skills uh while while people have been injured you know i think it's a it's a a, a harder thing on teams that um don't have uh as much depth as we do um so uh because then you know 
the the disparity between one guy and the next um, can really uh, have a trickle down effect to um, what you're able to do, either offensively, defensively, or from special team standpoint. It hasn't inhibit our ability to do really um, anything. We have uh, a ton of ton of decisions to make that you want to be made on the field. So um, when certain people aren't on the field, other people's uh, uh, other players get an opportunity, and um, there's been some guys that have definitely taken advantage of that. So um, it, you know, in in this situation, 2003, 23 with the uh, Miami Dolphins, it's um, you know, it, it's just given opportunities to guys that uh, really need, you know, we need to see to make the right decision for the Miami Dolphins. Thank you. Last question, Alan. Uh, hi, Mike. Uh, for bookkeeping purposes, was the plan to get Mike some snaps, Mike White some snaps after Skyler in the game had his situation not surfaced? Yeah, no, the, he was... Uh, that that's why he he um he was going to get reps. We we had them split, um, you know, to kind of equal it out from the game previous. Uh, and uh, so when he was he was in, um, he was going to be in for the duration. Um, uh, and then plans quickly changed. So um, you 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 just adjust like all football teams have to. Um, but yeah, he was planning. Uh, we were planning on getting him some snaps in the game. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. All right.